Hi everyone, it's me Jo and today I have a really cool video and I wanted to give you a bit of an update vlog. So hopefully my kitchen's not too echoey because it tends to be a little bit echoey in here. <laughs> but I'm so excited today to bring you not only just a catch up vlog and tell you guys what I've been up to, but to also be partnering with the incredible Veganuary, which is one of the biggest animal rights organizations. They've done so much work to promote and bring attention to the sort of alternatives we can eat and i'm really fascinated by this because i think this year was the first year where you could buy vegan fast food so i went on a bit of a journey where i wanted to do something that wasn't just makeup 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 i had such a great time and a fun 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 experience working in makeup but my ambition was to make products and i have done so much successful work in that sort of specific area of makeup that to continue just doing this for the sake of it it just feels like I'm doing a day job and then I've also got like this is like my side hustle and it's like I'm doing too much of the same thing it doesn't inspire me creatively and I think people were really apprehensive to sort of like I don't know I, I just don't think people were expecting me to be into food and I love food not because I literally love eating because I, I like eating but I like trying new things I like the new technology and foods I like how they're making vegan alternatives so I started a website called Agiprop based on the idea of bringing you guys different types of content from an LGBT perspective so things that you wouldn't expect to find a career of my kind of range to be doing and it was so nerve-wracking for me that i didn't really put much content out there on my main platforms so i kept it sort of to my page not to my main facebook i did it on a website not on youtube i really wanted to test the waters and see not only if i could do it and people would like it but also if i could generate a a sort of way to fund itself and it's been so successful it's blown my mind the last six months of continuous partnerships just on the basis of my work that I've created and self-driven stuff. So when I started to talk to Veganuary and learn about what they did, I was amazed that they wanted me to do something like a live cook-off because I've never done it before. So I will be going live on their Instagram and I'll be making some chewy gooey cookies. I'm not a baker, I love my savory and spicy food. So hopefully this will be a good one. But um, yeah, super nerve wracking and I'll put the live stream as a part of this video and hopefully make this into a blog. So I'm so excited. Thank you guys for all the support. Um, side note, I have just had a chemical peel, so excuse peeling on my cheeks because I'm kind of getting my skin back into flawless. <laughs> so thank you guys. Sending love to everyone. So, all right, guys. So please I've enjoy never the done video. Like live, so I want to try and like do we ah oh, pin comment. There we go. So let me sit down. Let me sit down. Am I in shot? <laughs> okay, let's do that. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Harwood and I'm so excited to be on Veganuary Live because I'm kind of new to this, I'm kind of new to do all the cooking stuff. Not because I don't, I'm new to food, but because I, I used to be a makeup artist, so people might know my makeup videos because I did a lot of celebrity transformations and all the crazy stuff like that. But I'm a passionate vegan and I really wanted to connect with Veganuary and create something that was all about making fun stuff. And I set up a website. So my website is called Agitprop. So if you go on my bio, you can find it. It's just at my name, josephharwood.com. And I've got over 80 vegan recipes. So I really wanted to create something that was an LGBT driven but not focused blog about vegan food so if you guys want to check it out please do so today i'm going to be doing some vegan cookies now i live in the country so forgive me if you hear birds children or bears because it ain't my fault it's just what's going on outside but <laughs> but i'm going to start off with a really simple gooey chewy cookie recipe now the main reason i did this one on my website was because my little niece who is two two going on 20 <laughs> she really wanted to do cookies and i thought let's do something to kind of talk about the nhs and put rainbows on so they had rainbow sugar crystals all throughout the cookies and they were super vegan and easy to do so veganuary said do those ones so I, I i thought i would probably do a cooking of a sauce or a spicy thing for my first one but who knows um this one was the one to go ahead with so this is super simple, so I'll talk through the ingredients, and if you guys get lost, I'm sure there'll be a replay of this, but I've also got the breakdown on my website. So the basis of this is, you use 100 grams of fat, 100 grams of sugar, and 150 grams of flour. 
So if you think about all the concoctions you can create with that kind of quantity, you can have a field day. So if you wanted to do double chocolate chip cookies, you can add more of a cocoa or a cacao, which I'll show you today. I'm actually gonna be using um, orange peel. I'm showing you guys how to make orange candy, candied orange peel. Is it that one? We'll go with that one. So I wanted to think about how to be resourceful, how to not waste food, things that we sometimes throw away, try and be more health conscious. Even though they're a treat, we can use coconut sugars. There's just loads you can do with this. So the basics that I kind of prepared, because I thought, you know what, if I'm gonna have my Blue Peter moment, I'm gonna have some fun with this, with all colorful bowls and things like that. So yes, she is prepared. I hopefully you will enjoy this. So I've got my sugar and I've got my butter here. Now I actually used 100 grams of pure. So pure butter is a brand I'm sure you guys are familiar with. You can buy it in most supermarkets in the UK. And this one is the one that's actually designed for baking. So it's really, really simple and, you, and it's a very warm day, <laughs> as I'm sure you guys can see from me. But you can just basically put this in the microwave to give it a bit of a warm up and you want it to be softened and ready to go. So where's my big bowl? I'll jump up. So I'm gonna get my grandma's bowl. And the reason why I really love cooking um, is because my grandma, she actually taught me how to bake. And when um, my granddad suddenly passed away last year, we all decided to keep this home as a family home. And this is the kitchen that I grew up learning to cook in. So all of my recipes actually use my grandma's cutlery and bowls, and it feels like I'm cooking with her, even though she's no longer with us. And it just was all a story of how I could be more, I guess you would say connected to things that I grew up doing. And I think that's what we're all doing where it's like, when we're in this crazy lockdown situation, as I'm sure you guys are all finding ways to connect with your family members. Um, <laughs> so that's the backstory. So it's simple, let's go in. So you start off with 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of sugar. Now, as I've just said, I'm pre-prepared. So I'm gonna pop all my things here, I think, just to be easy. Now, the way that I'm gonna do this is just by creaming the two together. So if you guys are cooking on a hot day like this, you shouldn't have too much trouble. But it basically is simple. You can get kids to do it. So I'm actually gonna be doing this in real time. And then whilst this is baking, so it only takes about 10 minutes to bake. 10 minutes on 180 degrees in a conventional oven. It's not hard at all. So, I'm trying to do like a close up thing, but I don't think you guys will be able to see it. So I'll do it, I'll try it. Maybe you guys can see it. So literally you want it to be creamy. So 100 grams of sugar, I use just regular brown sugar, unrefined, and you guys can use coconut, you can use muscovado, demerara. Sometimes white sugar, um, it makes more of a, it's not as gooey. You know the brown sugars, they go more caramelly, don't they? Um, and this is the easiest part. So you start with that. Next, we're gonna grab some golden syrup. So everyone in America calls this molasses. Someone tell me in the comments, why is this called molasses? Because I have never heard of this word before and it sounds too similar to mollusk for my liking. I ain't thinking about snails when I'm making cookies, you know what I mean? Anyway, let's get into this. It always reminds me in this kitchen as well because my grandma used to sneakily give us spoonfuls of syrup when we were younger. And it's taken 10 years to burn them off. There you go. So, I'm just gonna start by kind of using my big spoon. If you've got kids, you can definitely introduce them to cooking by making them lick the spoons and so on, which is really fun with a little niecey. And this is the part where you'd actually put in something like a vanilla or a flavoring. Now, I'm gonna be doing sort of a spin on like a Terry's chocolate orange today. So I'm gonna be using orange, so it's not gonna be vanilla. And again, I used actually a mixture of alcohol and some leftover orange pieces and I left it overnight. So the alcohol kind of distills somewhat with orange, so you get a little bit of an orange flavor. Don't put loads in because obviously this will not be wise. You, can, you don't wanna put acidic things in with creamy things. Or so I've been told, who knows, maybe you could do something fabulous with that. So just having a couple of drops of that and it smells amazing. It's just delicious orange. Pause. So, next we have our next bowl. So in this bowl, I've 
pre-made and um, pre-mixed 100 grams of flour, 50 grams of cacao, which is not cacao, it's slightly different. I'm using a brand called Cacao Bliss, which I really like. So I'll show it to my little mini camera. And I've put in candied orange peel. So this is actually what I'm gonna teach you to make when they're cooking. So this is all my kind of dry ingredients that I'm gonna to put together. Now, if you mix your dry ingredients, like what you're gonna fill the cookies with, whether it be chopped chips, whether it be cherries, dried fruit, anything, and I'll show you some different alternatives at the end. This basically helps the, um, the ingredients not sink to the bottom of the cooking. So it, just putting that flour in is really good. So you want to kind of mix everything up and I've got some vegan chocolate, I've got some candied orange and then I've got some cacao. So this is going to be a chocolatey, orangey, just hopefully it will be delicious. And with my hands, I'm just going to mix this up and I should say there's 150 grams of the dry ingredient, 50 grams of whatever chocolate or fruit you want to put in, 100 grams of butter and 100 grams of sugar. You can add some baking flour or baking soda to regular flour to give it kind of self-raising, I should say. Um, I prefer to just use self-raising flour. And you also need a sprinkle of syrup because that's what gives it that gooiness. So I'm gonna put half of this in. Okay, so that's about 75 grams of flour and cacao and about 25 grams of the ingredients. So if I just mix it, you can pretty much see gonna look delicious. Right, let me just grab some more. There we go. So, I'm really tall by the way guys, so forgive me for trying to fit in this kitchen because it's like the Jolly Gay Giant trying to cook something here, but we will try our best. So, this is the part that I used to live for when I used to cook um, cakes with my grandma because she used to always like make the bowl like super sticky because then at the end you'd make all the cookies and you'd get to lick the bowl, <laughs> which was always a treat and something that I really enjoyed when I was younger. So I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. So it smells amazing. It's like a Terry's chocolate orange but with none of that milk. So. You can use whatever kind of chocolate you want. You can break up some um, vegan dairy-free chocolate. You could use some tarnas or raisins. I have one where I kind of mixed up some vegan white chocolate. So you can make that with cacao butter. Um, and pistachios, which I really like to say in a very posh accent. I don't know why. I think I probably watched like a French and Soldiers clip once upon a dream. And it's just stuck in my head or something like that. But what you should be left with, once you start to mix everything up, is you kind of have a sort of sticky, sandy concoction. And if you really want to, you can get your hands in it. I'm just going to rinse my hands. Two seconds. Now, I've got some baking trays. I've got the oven preheated to 180. I'm not quite sure what the American differences are. Sorry about that. But I'm gonna make probably about 12 cookies from this mixture. So if you wanted to make more than that, you double the mixture or add what you like. So, you want to have a vegetable oil or a tasteless fat to kind of stop it sticking. You can have butters and plant-based butters are really good, but sometimes they can burn, which is really annoying because they can mix with whatever you're cooking and it's difficult, isn't it, sometimes? And I used to think about this when I was younger because I just couldn't eat meat or dairy. I was really, really sick as a baby if I tried to. So it wasn't really like a, a choice where I thought, oh, I'm gonna choose to do this. It was something that I kind of had to do. Um, which I guess is not too much of a stretch, but I think when, because I'm in my 20s for one more year, there you go. I grew up not really having access to vegan things, even living in Brighton where there's loads of like hippie shops, you couldn't get loads that I would like to have tried. So I had to make do with what I had and I think some of the things that I've done with my recipes, which you can find at josephharwood.com, you just click on Agit Prop and Explore. A lot of it just came from trial and error and thinking about things that I wanted to eat that my family were eating that I just couldn't find. So I made do with what I had and this is what I did with this recipe and it's so simple. So you see this is cookie dough i'll show you this camera 
So it's really, really easy. And if you guys wanted to do like, I don't know, maybe make an ice cream, you could do something fancy. <laughs> but I did try and do one, which I'll show you in the end, which involved using cherry gummy sweets. Now, the vegan gummy sweets, as you guys probably know, when they get to a certain temperature, they go hard. So I had this sort of like tray of sort of clear red glass under chocolate cookies, which was not what I planned at all. <laughs> So that experiment did not quite go to plan, but here we go. We're doing an orange and chocolate chip one because that one's foolproof and delicious. So this is the kind of size balls you want to make. Now, they do flatten down as they cook. So obviously you don't want to be too big on this type of baking tray. These are only little mini ones. But if you wanted to go really, really big, you can. You just turn it down, I would say, to about 160 and cook them for a little bit longer, um, just to be precautious. So I'll film little close-ups and hopefully when I put this all together at the end, you guys will be able to see <laughs> quite a cook-off. And you guys got a feedback to me, by the way, when this is in the oven, you got to tell me if I'm doing my Nigella shit right or if I need to work on it because I will try my best. It was so funny, when I used to do makeup like on YouTube all the time, people used to always say to me like, oh, you're going to do like a makeup line and do all this stuff and I'm like, no, I want to do a cookbook. <laughs> and here we are. So. <laughs> always good to go with your heart and follow what you um what you enjoy doing i think so if you want these to be super neat you can just lay them on the tray and i try and spread them out like this so i'll quickly go through these and pop them in the oven because as i said they only take about 10 minutes or so and hopefully it will not spread out and look really bad so i'll do sort of mini ones on the small tray just to be precautious because they can be like little mini cookies to give to kids or whatever and then I'll do like try and do chunky ones on the bigger. So if you guys been enjoying cooking in lockdown, I've definitely noticed that things like flour have been really hard to get. So <laughs> it was a nightmare for me to try and um, make bread when everything started to go into sort of restricted access and things like that because you get used to buying things that you like use all the time, don't you? And then you're like, oh, you can't have this. And you're like, oh crap, what do I have to do? So I worked with the United Nations and the World Food Programme on a recipe. And I decided to do something like a spin on like a pasta. And I used um, a banana peel as the basis to make bacon. So I really like doing things that kind of used ingredients that normally we throw away. And then that way we can waste not our food. And it's really, really easy to do that, by the way. And I'll show you in the break kind of thing or the, the cooking section, section what I do um, with the orange peel. So I've got one, two, three, four, wait, let me count slowly so I don't go completely do lally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I've got some little ones left over here. We'll do like a tiny mini, a mini one in the middle. So here you go. Easy. Da -da -da -da. In the oven they go. It's really useful in this kitchen to have everything in close proximities, but we can try to do our best. I was really nervous actually because a lot of the um, the like the prep work I did, I was like, oh my god, everything's gonna melt because it's so warm. But we'll be okay. So that's gonna go into the oven now for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna actually check to see, whoops, let me do my second count. That's why you need like assistance. When my niece gets to three, I can start checking child labor laws and we can get her recruited as a camera assistant maybe and you can meet her, but who knows. So it was just all really a fun experiment to do these because I thought about how I could like do different sort of mixes, different nuts, different dried fruits. And um, I thought like, how can I do something that actually takes something we throw away and makes it into something good? So I love the idea of making handmade candy orange peel. So I'm gonna show you now how to do this. It's really easy. So all you need to do is you need to get a saucepan. Now, the annoying thing about this house is it's got an induction hob. So induction hobs tend to really blast food with heat. Great for quick cooking. And it's funny because my partner, at, he had a series of restaurants and things and he was talking about how they're really good for restaurants. But I don't live in a restaurant and I sometimes like that old fashioned gas, like where I can control the heat, you can slow cook things. 
they're really hard to do that here. So I, I've been kind of like learning to operate a different style of oven, but I think I've been doing okay. But the easiest thing to kind of say with these is you wash the oranges thoroughly, try and get non-waxed fruit. They're really, really annoying that they coat fruit in wax. I know it preserves it to some degree, but come on, if we just buy fresh and we keep things growing, it will be great. So you wash these thoroughly first. And the way I kind of do it is I use, kind of take off the top of the orange with the kind of, what's this called, the stem, the stem. And then I just cut through the orange like so and begin to peel. Now, with all fruit, they have this sort of like waxy layer in between. And when I actually do cosmetics, it's interesting to find out where the oils actually come from, from the plant, because you think, oh, it's gonna come from the juicy bit in the middle. Quite often it comes from that white stuff that we throw away when we're cooking. So it's really good to think about things that you make in beauty with food, because what we put in our body actually ends up affecting what we look like ultimately. So anyway, you get this peel, and if you're, do if you're eating oranges with your kids and you're trying to be healthy, then just keep hands, like keep these in a bowl or something, pop them in the fridge. Now, all you do is you scrape off the back of this, because this is the bitter pith. Now, I used to always think that some people would say pith and they'd have like a strange like aff affectation to their voice, but actually I think it's spelled P-I-T-H. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But who knows? I don't know. So you scrape off the back of this, really, really simple, and it should start looking almost like honeycomb, and I'm trying to do this on camera, but normally I do it against a chopping board. Let's see what I can do. So it will look sort of like the inside. Um, it will look the same on both sides, almost, because you don't really want any of that bitterness in your sweet cooking. Now, I'm sure if you wanted to add things like cardamom, then really nice with oranges. You could add things like a whiskey or a brandy or a coffee, but I thought just stick with some dairy-free chocolate and some canning of orange. So if you see, it should kind of look like that, and I clean up the edges a little bit more. I'm gonna show this camera too. Are we doing it? So all you do is you make a simple, simple, simple sugar syrup. So melt about three teaspoons of white caster sugar into about three teaspoons of white sugar, uh, what's it called, water. The thing that comes from the sea, this thing. We'll get the water and the sugar boiling and then you should start to notice a little bubbly effect, almost like you're making a toffee or a caramel. And it's simple. You just chop the oranges up or you can be really sneaky and sheet with some scissors and it's simple. You just cut up chunks, pop it in a pan. And the way I kind of do it is I don't really have any rules because when my grandma used to teach me about cooking, it was almost that you, you should use like your own sense to tell when things are done, like taste it, smell it, look at it. Don't rely on things like someone else's instructions because someone else might have had a different setup to you. It might've been in a hotter climate, there might have been differences in the ingredient. So just try and be like active with testing out what you actually want to um, what you want to experiment with because that's where I used to go wrong. I used to follow to the T all these recipes and think like, oh my God, my cake's not going really big. And I think especially with vegan food, you it's not as, it's funny because you follow like vegan cakes and you think like, oh my God, on Instagram, you see all these magnificent creations and then you actually go back and you try it yourself and you end up with a pancake with a puddle on and you're like, for God's sake, what have I done? But anyway, so keep on doing this and I'm just showing you this while the cookies cook because I wanted to show you how quickly they take. So they're in the oven now for anyone that's just joined and we're just making some candied orange peel. So. If you wanted to kind of like instill them in sort of like a whiskey, that'd be nice. Um, depends what you want to do, because it will kind of burn off. I thought let's just play it safe. So you simply remove the pith, and some of this will come off. If you've started it, the rest will follow, because as you cook it, a lot of that will start to separate from the actual skin. And obviously you have to thoroughly wash the oranges, which I did before. Good to go. So next we grab some sugar. This is some brown sugar. I I would use white sugar just to be safe, not sorry, but I'm gonna use brown sugar because this is just like a demo. I was really impressed actually when I first made these because I thought, oh my God, like those, I remember them like, because my grandma used to have like a cupboard full of like glass like, cherries and um, what else does she have? Golden syrup, treacle, 
um, those food colourings, the old fashioned ones and candied orange peel and I thought oh my god that's such a good idea to do in a modern kind of cookie. So you simply add some water to this mixture and then you start to bring it to the boil and it will start to make a syrup and when the syrup starts to actually sort of look less liquidy and you start to see it coat the orange completely and there isn't a residual amount in the bottom of the um, pan that's when you take it off and that's the fun part because once all that sugar is melted and coated the orange peel you then throw a load more sugar in <laughs> so anyone that's on the keto diet this is not for you but maybe you could make this with some protein shake and nuts lots of ways around things these days who knows so basically simple um i'm gonna check on the the cookies now we'll see how it goes they smell amazing already you shouldn't really do this but i'll give you a sneak preview so you start to see them sort of flatten out from those balls and we've got another five minutes to go so, have you guys got any questions? I'd love to take um, some questions. So, Animal Rights, hello. Um, NMBK, lots of letters and numbers there. Let's have a look. How are you? Um, cookie's nice. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Um, so, I'm doing okay. I'm enjoying lockdown, but it's a bit crazy as normal. Um, I oh, someone's talking talking about Blackout Tuesday. Everyone, I'm so excited. Um, my family is of all shades. <laughs> um, I'm so excited. We're starting to talk about this in the mainstream for the first time because it's been an ongoing series of events that I think have have hurt people to the core, and things need to change. Um, so I'm very excited to see how we can do things. One caution I will err, uh, if you're using a black square and you're applying hashtags, make sure you're not actually debilitating the function of those hashtags because a lot of people use them to talk to each other and to pass integral information. So let's support the cause, but let's actually do this and think about how our posting could maybe desensitize the nature of a hashtag that someone could use to actually communicate these ideas and to make progress we need to think about things in a bit of a wider way but anyway let's go back to cookies what more do we have oh thank you i promise you this is the weirdest thing for me because i am normally glamorous to the gods to be in a kitchen not only when it's sweltering hot with an oven and two lights on but also i have just had a chemical peel so i look like samantha from sex in the city during that whole series where she was trying the acid peels. So I didn't have the courage to put makeup on top of it. So forgive me if I look like a hot mess. There is a re there's a reason to the madness. But yes, my, my partner was like, what are you doing? Why have you done that to your face? But <laughs> so someone's asked gluten-free. Now, of course you can do this gluten-free. You can actually swap the dry ingredients. So I'll go through those ingredients again. You have hundred grams of fat, hundred grams of sugar, you have 150 grams of dry ingredients and flour, and then fifth, well, I say dry ingredients, but I just mean flour, you know what I mean? But I'm thinking about things like adding cacao or cocoa instead. 150 grams of that, and then you choose an ingredient, whether it be raisins, nuts, whether it be sugar, icing, little decor, like I did on my website, um, or more. So very, 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 very easy to follow along. Hopefully this will be reposted and you guys can check it out. But find my website, it's josephharwood.com, my name. But you click on Agitprop. And then on Agitprop, we have nearly 100 recipes that are gonna come out in the next two weeks. So there's so much content there for you guys to follow. I'm much better, I think, at savory food and spicy food than I am at sweet food, but I'm really learning. And I started Agitprop as a way to document, explore and challenge what I what I did. Um, I grew up vegan, but my family did, they ate like ravenous hyenas. So <laughs> I, I kind of wanted to match what they ate, but not obviously have anything to do with the cruelty towards animals involved in it. So that's what I did. So I made food on my website that I thought was normal household food that families eat, but we could do something fabulous with it. So I was really excited. So please check it out, it's really cool. Let's have a look at more. I'm just gonna quickly wash my hands if that's okay. 
since we are in a pandemic, it is definitely worthwhile noting that we should be on super, super, super caution about everything we're doing. So let's have a look. Um, Pride Month. Yes, very exciting. Um, I've actually got some work coming out over Pride Month with a couple of brands. So if you follow my work, you'll see that. But I'm excited because I've taken a couple of years off of doing my mainstream beauty work. Um, and I started to develop some products last year. So this will be brilliant. You're British. Yes, British. Um, but my genealogy is incredibly mixed, which I found out by what... I did one of those DNA tests that gives you the ancestry. So it was fascinating stuff. So lots of people bringing attention to Blackout Tuesday. Good, we need to start talking about this. Um, however, this was scheduled in and, and I had to meet my obligations and obviously with a family of, with black people. I'm not concerned, um, I'm more concerned than you guys would know. So fully support Blackout Tuesday and we should be using our social platforms to protest against brutality against um, black and ethnic minority people. Right, greetings from Washington State. You look stunning. Oh my God, thank you guys. I really didn't feel it today. I think the mixture of the lights, the heat, and all the madness in the world. <laughs> there is no such thing as too many rainbows. I agree. It's very, 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 very cool to put rainbows in your feed. And I was thinking about ways of actually doing that with this one, but I thought, you know what, I'll show you a varied option because I've got the rainbow cookies online. What else have we got? My nails are cute. Oh, thank you. So apparently there is no real equivalent to golden syrup in America, according to Google, like corn syrup or agave, perhaps. Is that true? You can't get golden syrup? That is crazy. I did not know that. So let's have a look. Let's see the cookies. Let's do the reveal. Oh my God, they look so good. Do, 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 do. <gasps> cookies. So you can pretty much tell that they are delicious looking already. Now, what should happen is you should start to see almost like a, um, I kind of like deflation so they kind of like sugars pour into themselves. So what I'll do is I'll just wiggle them around and pop them on a plate and show you some actual afters, okay? So that can go there. And then here are the others. Ta-da! Super duper exciting. So I'll put them on the side and show you ones I made earlier. So if you at the very end. So the one I really liked was how look. So we did double chocolate chip cookies, which I was really excited to make. Um, because these are the ones that I thought if I can do like a really delicious double chocolate chip, that's gonna be like because it's, it's kind of hard, I think, to find um, dairy-free double chocolate chip. So there's one variety. <laughs> then we have... Two variety, which is the vegan white chocolate and pistachio. And if I show you how they kind of are like really and delicious. Wow, that one's been in the fridge, so it's a bit crumbly, but... Oh, mm -hmm. So, I'll pop these on a plate. I'm going to use a knife. I'm enjoying these too much, so I'll be one second. They're all coming up really nicely, and you probably should leave them to set. You should probably leave them to set for about 10 20 minutes. Right, here we go. So 
So here's some just dried oranges, which I did on a low temperature in the oven with some delicious gooey, chewy cookies. So uh, hopefully you guys like that because it was the first time I've done that one. And I know it's Blackout Tuesday, but I thought, do you know what? Let's do something, let's bring attention to something and also keep on going because this is such a amazing time to connect with people and to use our voices to express what we're going through. And yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining in. Um, sending love to everyone. Hopefully I answered enough questions. And take care. Um, please donate to appropriate causes. Use your voice wisely on your platform. And don't forget to find my stuff, which is Agitprop. And it's at my link in bio at Joseph Harlan. Thank you, guys. Take care. Mwah.